In this video, I'm going to show you how I use the MS Paint method for planning color schemes. In Color Schemes Part 1, we talked extensively about painting motivations, reference material, and how to create color schemes based on other works of art. Today, we're going to be taking all of that theory and putting it into practice, creating a brand new color scheme for our Ossiarch Bone Reapers army. I'm excited to create a new color scheme for these figures because they are relatively abstract and something you would not encounter in real life. So we can kind of just go wild and create something completely new. To get started, there are two ways that I generally like to approach color schemes. The first is theme first. The second is reference first. Using the theme first method, we would be coming up with a theme ahead of time, either based on existing lore about this faction or some sort of concept that you have in mind from the real world, such as Vaporwave or Brutalist Architecture. And then you take that theme and then you assign colors to it. So it's concept first, then colors. The reference first method is the opposite. Maybe you have a certain amount of colors in mind that you think would look good on these models. And then you decide to come up with a theme or a story after the fact that would suit those colors. Or maybe you don't like to come up with stories for your dolls, in which case, I can't really help you. Today we're going to be using the theme first method for our Ossiarch Bone Reapers army. So by theme first, I mean I was commissioned to paint some crematorians, which are a sub-faction described in this book. If you're unfamiliar with Age of Sigmar, there is always a battle tome or a book which explains the rules and a lot of the background for each of the armies. I don't actually play Age of Sigmar, but I own far too many of these books because I find the artwork and the description, the history, the background can really help inspire color schemes for when I'm painting these figures. The Ossiarch Bone Reapers are just what they sound like. An army of elite bone constructs created by Nagash, the Lord of Undeath, to be his shock troops in his war to take over the mortal realms. The Bone Reapers have several sub-factions, which all have fun sub-themes, like bone constructs made of fossils, bone constructs made of magic bones, and the Crematorians, which is the sub-faction we're going to be dealing with today, again, because someone paid me to, are the sub-faction based on fire. So the Crematorians are skeleton constructs, not skeletons, bone constructs, which contain the malice of Nagash inside of them in the form of magical flames. So what happens is Nagash sends these armies into villages that he wants to make an example of, and they basically explode when they get there. So they're like walking bombs. And one of the things that appealed to me, one of the reasons that I'm glad I bought this battle tome, is that it told me a bunch of the background and it kind of made me really feel for these bone constructs because it talks about how, because they're so expendable, sometimes two of them will make a pact to rebuild the other one once they explode. And it, and then there's also the, the leader of the faction, Igno, wait, sorry. Ignopatrix, <laughs> Ignopatris Zaranos, who loves his bone constructs so much that he spends all of this time behind his leader's backs trying to find magical means by which to extend the lives of his expendable soldiers. Anyway, the crematorians are great. So today we're going to be doing a crematorians army. There is a Games Workshop take on what this color scheme looks like, but today we're going to be taking this theme and we're going to be doing our own take on the color scheme. With that in mind, let's take a look at the official art so that we can create our own art that is different from it. So uh, this is the official art that Games Workshop has for the Crematorians. There's nothing else aside from this. There's one soldier. Uh, it's a pretty cool model. I really like what the studio team did with this model. There's some really nice details here. I 
especially really like how they depicted this concept of the fire being inside of the figure and sort of pouring out through the cracks in the figure. And also how there's some fire bursting out through the ground, it looks like, below the figure. So I think some of these concepts could be incorporated into our new color scheme. But maybe we'll just take it in a direction which is a little bit more colorful, a little bit more... Well, you know what I mean. After looking at this color scheme, I decided, well, let's take a look at Google Image Search, see if we can find some other characters who have flame bursting out from within them. Uh, so there's a few characters who came to mind. Deathwing from the Cataclysm expansion of World of Warcraft. Ragnaros from World of Warcraft. Basically a lot of characters from World of Warcraft. I tried to gather as much reference material as possible before realizing I had the perfect piece of reference material already sitting on my hard drive. I came across this piece of artwork on Twitter several months ago. It was posted by my Twitter friend, Noppy. His Twitter, link is Twitter in the corner here. Um, and uh, he often posts a lot of stuff like this and I always, uh, I've saved quite a bit of it because he likes to post a lot of old toy artwork and things that I find really inspirational. I'll tell you a secret. One of the best things that I use for inspiration for miniatures is toy artwork, especially toy artwork from the 80s and 90s. There's like a treasure trove of amazing color schemes. If you look at the toy artwork, not the toys themselves, but often there's great packaging artwork for a lot of these toys, especially from the 80s and 90s, that you can use for all kinds of color schemes. So go do some image searches or follow Noppy on Twitter. So I did spend some time looking for reference material on the internet, but this was one of those cases where it's like, I could make the dough from scratch, or I could just use store-bought and save a lot of time and no one's really going to notice the difference in taste. So in this case, we're just going to copy this artwork. So with our theme and reference material selected, it's time to move on to the MS Paint method. The MS Paint method for creating color schemes is a tool I've been using for quite some time now. I'm not sure where I got the idea to use MS Paint. I think I might have just always liked to use MS Paint whenever I can because it's a fun tool that nobody really uses for anything anymore. Uh, but I do think I saw, I may have been inspired by people on Twitter using MS Paint to mock up color schemes for clients, for commission work. If I, if I copied someone, please let me know it was not intentional. This is just something I've been doing for a while. So the idea is instead of painting anything in the real world with real paint, it will save us a lot of time and it's really quick to modify and make changes by creating a color scheme first in MS Paint. Of course, you could use Photoshop or whatever tool that you might use for digital painting. Any sort of drawing program will do where you can use colors to paint on a computer screen. There's a lot of these simple programs out there. There's probably a lot of freeware out there. If you use Photoshop, you could use Photoshop, but my favorite is MS Paint because it's really low tech. It's on a lot of systems and it's never going away, hopefully. So as you can see, our first step here is to open up the MS Paint file and to expand the canvas so that we have some room to work next to the key arts. The first thing I'm going to do is use the eyedropper tool to grab some of the colors from the key art and start creating a palette for myself of the different colors that I think are important to the color scheme. You can see a lot of what I'm doing here is just trying to process the colors and organize them in a way that I can sort of understand. So the first thing I'm doing here is taking all of the different colors of purple and lining them up. You can see I've sort of noticed there's a purple gradient going on. And then the next thing I'm doing is pulling out all of the other non-purple colors. And you can see I'm creating a second gradient next to the purple gradient as I'm starting to realize that this color scheme is really just two different gradients. And 
I've sped this footage up a little bit, I think about three times, so that's why my mouse is moving so quickly. I thought I would save you the trouble of watching me do this in real time. So here we have, you can see I've basically got two different gradients next to each other. And at this point, I have decided to pull in the color wheel. And you can see I've noticed a pattern. And I'm just going to put this here to demonstrate for you which colors are being used in this color scheme. Basically, we're using the entire color wheel, or we're using a slice of the color wheel, what I would call an analogous color scheme. We're basically using all the colors that aren't blue and green and cyan. I do a lot of color schemes like this. The Night Haunt color scheme is very similar. I find analogous schemes are a bit easier to put together than contrasting schemes. So now that we have all of our paint palettes lined up, it's time to pull in the official art from Games Workshop. And what we're going to do here is just take the colors that we already have and start experimenting with painting over the existing model. So we can just use the eyedropper tool to take any colors we need from our palette. And then we're going to use a brush tool to paint over top of the existing model in MS Paint. Of course, you don't really need to paint over the exact model. You could always just draw like a stick figure and and uh, freehand this step, but I find it helpful to take the actual model and draw over top of it. It just really helps me visualize what the model might look like. So this is a pretty common step for me now whenever I'm doing a larger army. I think this entire process took me about 20 minutes, which is a huge time savings over what this would ordinarily take me in real life. So I really think this is worth the time if you're doing a large army to do a mock-up like this before you put any paint onto a model. So now that I've got all of the parts of the bone mocked up in purple, you can see I'm starting to highlight some of the colors on here using that lighter metallic looking purple that they have on the model in the key art, just to sort of help me visualize what I'm going to do with this color. And I think at this point I was thinking I wanted to do a light purple to dark purple gradient and then use the other colors to sort of highlight the other parts of the model. As I'm doing this, I'm also visualizing in my head how I'm going to achieve this with an airbrush. And I'm taking some of the other colors that I like in the scheme, like this sort of deep magenta color, and using it for some of the cloth. Sort of mimicking the way that in the key art it's used very sparingly. I think it's a fun highlight color. And here I'm experimenting with using some of the reds and oranges on the armor, which I think looks pretty good. It's not exactly how, it's not like we're just copying the key art here, but we're just sort of taking some of the colors from the background, seeing how it looks. Here you can see I've decided that instead of orange, what if we used a bone color? on some of the trimming of the armor. So I'm liking how this is looking. You can see I'm still deciding here how to paint the sword. And I've decided to paint it purple. Pretty cool. I 
and then experimenting here with some colors of what what color is the base going to be. I'm trying out uh, an orange base to sort of match the way the ground looks in the key art. I think even at this point I was imagining maybe having some sort of cracked earth on the base with fire coming up through it. And then I'm using that very bright yellow for just some of the highlight colors. And that's pretty much it. So uh, I'm pretty happy with what we've come up with in MS Paint, and I'm gonna take that and translate it into an in-person test model with one of our Ossiarch Bone Reapers. So I'll be back in just a minute and you can see what I've come up with. Because I'm filming this out of order, I did the MS Paint thing like a month ago and I painted the test model a week after that. So here's what the test model ended up looking like. As you can see, it differs quite a bit from the MS Paint model. There's a gradient that I've incorporated because of course I did. And there's a few little differences between our MS Paint mock-up and our in-person mock-up. The reason for this is just because things from 2D don't always translate to 3D in the way you think they will. I like to use the MS Paint method as a brainstorming tool and a guide, and I usually translate things slightly differently onto the 3D model. However, you can see I did use a lot of the same colors and the sort of same vibe has been translated from 2D to 3D. So I hope that this instructional video has been helpful to you and you can see the value of MS Paint. There's a reason it's still on Windows computers. Thank you for watching my video on the MS Paint method. If you'd like to see the full details of how I painted my Ossiarch Bone Reapers army, I'm going to dedicate an entire video to just that subject. Because if I put that in this video, this video would be over an hour long probably. That's about it for today. If you have any other questions about color schemes or ideas for color scheme videos that you might want me to do, I'm open to ideas. So leave your comments down below and let me know what sorts of color scheme videos you'd like to see from me in the future. With all that said, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. Thanks to your help, I've been able to devote a lot of time in my life and a lot of space to this hobby creating videos for YouTube, creating commission work for my patrons, and just generally spending more of my time painting. So if you'd like to see your name up here, or if you'd like to gain access to some bonus footage, you can subscribe on Patreon at patreon.com slash Dana Howell. Or if you'd like to follow my daily painting progress, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dana underscore Howell. I'm sorry this video was a little bit late. As you can see, I've been spending a lot of time renovating this space to a full-time YouTube studio. So I will have lots more videos to come this year and I hope to see you in those videos. Wait, no, not literally. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.